part, even though he had fallen short, even though he had fallen here, fallen there, and done these things, it's like we fall short and we fall into sin, but we still love the Lord Amen. and we dance before him and we shout for glory and we rejoice always in him, praise God. And religious people can't stand that. They say, well, they, he ought to be repenting right now. The ark, of, the ark of the Lord, the, the word of God's coming forth. They ought to be upon that ark to repent. And here they are rejoicing like they somebody. <laughs> oh my goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Man, you look around the church, man, if you start celebrating the Lord, some of you will be looking at you with a bitter face. Uh -huh. Ooh, and that bitter face is ugly too. Uh -huh. <laughs> but she despised him. And I'm thinking, all you got to do to get the same thing is ask the Lord. Man, you just ask him. Say, Lord. I see they got something that I don't have, Lord. I, I want that joy again. You don't have to despise the one that has it. Ask Him for it. He said His Heavenly Father would give good gifts. Every good gift comes from the Father of lights. Oh, praise God. It's His good it's His good pleasure to give you the Holy Ghost. And that's what inspires that excitement. That's what inspires that joy. That energy inside is the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's all it is. Jesus died to give us the promise of the Father. That's the promise of the Father. And I want a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Woo, praise God. Go, go with me to 1 Chronicles. Same story. It's just David gets so excited he starts praising God. 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Mm -mm -mm. I told you we had a word. Like I said, all right. I love praise. I love worship. It is beautiful. But what I see out of balance going on right now in many, many churches, and what we talked about a while ago is that testimony they gave while ago about that revival, mm -hmm. is people are getting into that praise and worship and that music. One reason why is because it, it releases endorphins in, out of the brain. The chemicals roll through your body and through your bloodstream, and you start feeling pretty good. Uh, you start feeling, wow, a dopamine hits you. And you start feeling, wow. Because you're getting excited in the praise and worship. But without God's Word, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. But when you put them together, see, God gave us these feelings and these chemicals in our brain for a reason. Mm -hmm. They were all made. That's why the angels worship in heaven, praise God. There's a reason why we worship. We're made to worship. Mm -hmm. But when you start doing that and you put the Word of God with that worship, that's when you got the power and the presence of the living God. We're just worshiping no word. All we got is a good feeling. <laughs> and that good feeling don't last. Have you ever been in a church that has a beautiful tabernacle choir that sounds like they've been practicing for 30 years? Uh -huh. They sound beautiful and you feel good in there. And then you walk out the door and Monday's horrible. Tuesday's horrible. Wednesday's horrible. You feel like there's no connection there. But when you go back in that box, you feel good. That's not only the Holy Spirit. Sometimes what they're doing is they're trying to lead you to that place only. When every single day you should have a relationship with God. Yeah. If the Word is taught correctly, you will have that same feeling mm -hmm. and that same joy in your shower, out in the woods, in your vehicle, and on your job. Mm -hmm. Not just in this box. Mm -hmm. Ooh, my Amen. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yep. David was out in front of everybody. He wasn't in the temple, and he was just dancing and shouting. And they were like, well, he's not in any type of temple. What's he dancing and shouting for? Because he had the joy of the Lord. Amen. Because he found God out there in the pasture when he was dealing with them sheep, and when he was being a shepherd over them sheep. He found the Lord. Amen. And he had communion with God. Hallelujah. That's what he's looking for us to have. And that comes every single minute of the day. Jesus don't leave just because you walk out the church door. <laughs> but too many are wanting that excitability. They want the entertainment instead of God's Word, which brings life. It is His Word that brings life. He said, you can do nothing without me. Without my Word, there's no life. And people say, I don't really want that, man. Because if I read that, that means i got to stop some things and clean up. But I do want that excitement. I do want the social club. Oh, I just want to see what Susie Hughes doing and what she's going to wear today. 
I hope she don't have the same thing I got on. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. No. That ain't right. That's a social clue. Oh, but when God's word is cracked and the Holy Ghost wisdom starts coming through and he starts teaching you and he starts exhorting you and he starts even rebuking us, amen. Praise God, stepping on our toes and saying, you know you ought to put that down, there. I said, I know, I know. <laughs> That's what we need, amen. That's what builds a mighty army for the end time season we're in. Jesus is building an army. He's not building a bunch of weak ones, people. He's going to make you stronger than you ever thought about. Amen. You're going to look back and say, wow, I didn't think I could handle this right here that I'm going through. But Jesus has built me over the months and the years of sitting under the Word and the anointing of the Word of God because He's put and He's fed me with nutrients. He's fed me with the spiritual nutrients that I need, mm -hmm. amen, to exist in this world that we're in. People not get it. If you open that Word, you're not going to get the nutrients. You might be saved, but you're going to be a defeated Christian. You've got to have the soul. Amen. The sword of the Spirit. What is wrong with everybody? I was attacked on the Facebook earlier because they said, nope, you're incorrect. All you need is the praise and the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost anoints what? The Word. The Word. Gospel of John 1.1 Because mm -hmm. Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. It's not the Holy Ghost that's just going to anoint entertainment. He's going to anoint the word coming forth. When he knows that that pastor is going to open that word and give a, that meat, not just the milk, but the milk and the meat, then the praise goes forth before that's open. There will be a supernatural anointing from the day you, that from the minute you step foot in there. But when he knows that pastor's not even going to open up the word of God and go over it, what's wrong with that picture? That is a false anointing. Believe me, the Antichrist desires to give people false anointing. He'll knock you on the ground and try to lead you away from the cross. Oh, yeah, you'll be right in church. Man, oh, I got slain in the spirit. You got slain in something, but that wasn't the Holy Ghost. That might have been something else. If it leads you away from Christ and Him crucified and what He paid for, because the Holy Ghost will not even glorify Himself, He glorifies Jesus. Jesus said He will come and He will speak of me. Amen? He won't speak of all this spooky stuff you see going on these days. Or throw a dollar over your head and turn around seven times and you're going to get the victory. He ain't going to find that. Mm -hmm. And you may fall down and say, oh, I fell under the power of God. I don't know what God you fell under. All this world maybe. But if he's preaching Christ and crucified, then that's the God. Amen. That's Amen. the Holy Ghost glorifying him. He said, well, I'll be lifted up. I'll draw all men unto myself. Amen. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 12. It's him being lifted up. Woo, and he is the what? The word. The word. 